Hi guys, uh, I'm Carl Anderson and uh, welcome on this new webcast where we'll see how to implement data validation using Confluent entities in a uh, ISP.NET website. So, data validation is supported by uh, Confluent entities by default and uh, all we have to do is in our Confluent model uh, add a validation rule on the properties that we want to validate. So, if you remember from the previous webcast, we already created a contact list where I could manage all my contacts and I could edit, delete, or create a new one, as you can see on the screen right there. And so, what we're going to do is we're going to add in the business object model uh, our new validation rule so that I won't be able to type in any invalid uh, contacts. So, uh, since it's a business rule, we want it in our model so that it's so so that it will be added to our business object model so this way uh, if ever we have several clients such as a website a smart client and uh, I don't know web services and so on the rule is at a single place it's in the bomb and uh, it will be used by all upper layers so this is uh, this is actually very important because it will uh, this is what allows us to create very flexible and um, and, uh, and and perduring uh, applications. So here I'm going to add my my validation rule. So it's a CF rule, and its type name is of a string validate. Because here we're validating a string, but we could validate uh, I don't know phone numbers, emails, URLs. Uh, there's lots of different validation rule types and I invite you to to check out our documentation uh, to know about all those uh, types. So I'm not going to cover all those uh, I'm just going to illustrate how to implement validation in general uh, into a website and what I want to do is I want to forbid any uh, invalid username uh, to be typed in and, and I consider uh, a first name invalid whenever one of those invalid characters are contained in the string so I could go I don't know this and and those so by doing so I'm declaring that the underscore star and dollar are invalid characters to be contained in a first name and we're going to do the the same for a last name too there so I'm saving my model and now that my model was changed I will need to rebuild my application. So I hit build.bat and there it, it produced my bomb once again. So you can see that my class contact.cs was modified. So if I take a look at it and uh, go into the validate method Um, it has a validate member. Sorry, it's in the validate member. There we go. In the validate member. You can see that now we got two more rules, uh, whereas we hadn't any before, uh, meaning that the first name should be validated uh, using the first name validator, and uh, the last name should be validated with the last name validator. So. Here we are. I just want to show you the validators that they are of the, the validator type. And if we look at it, you can see that the invalid characters that are specified are the ones that were uh, specified declared in my model. Okay, so now our bomb has those uh, validation capabilities, and now that the bomb has it, all my upper layers can can um, can you leverage those capabilities? I don't know if you remember, but in the previous webcast in my contact edit.ispecs and contact insert.ispecs web pages, I had error controls here, which if which if ever I had which is if ever I had any uh, any exception that would that would be raised during my uh, my uh, update process. Uh, those exceptions would be trapped and uh, and displayed in my uh, UI. 
So now that we have those, I'm just going to rebuild my website so that the referenced uh, contact admin DLL is updated. And what we're going to do here is we're going to update this web page. Okay, I reloaded the web page. And uh, what we're going to try is try to create a new invalid uh, contact. So uh, let's create call it test test and with uh, some more invalid characters and uh, its last name is going to be T T right I click on OK so it takes a little longer on the first time since uh, new DLLs were imported and you can see here that uh, I got validation errors here saying that a test test value for first name contains one or more of the following invalid characters. Okay, so this is basically how to implement validation uh, in an ISP.NET website, but not only in an ISP.NET website, because as you can, as, uh, as you saw, uh, validation capabilities are added to the bomb, so all clients uh, can benefit from from those validation capabilities. So this is it for this uh, webcast, and uh, I hope to see you soon on another one.